Right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Kakwadash. It's all praise to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, who the world is called Jesus Christ. His real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give praise, honor, and glory to the Yahweh Kakwadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force, the entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to our Eastern Sir Hardin Akim, Wakwathish, brothers and sisters, make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who tells us truth and the rule well. And um, <clears throat> this morning, I just want to briefly touch on two, uh, you know, two articles. Uh, one is concerning uh, what this diesel fuel, this is off of uh, CNBC. CNBC, it says, diesel fuel is in short supply as prices surge. Here's what Here's what that means for inflation. So, you know, and you know, the average citizen, you know, in America doesn't think about, you know, uh, how a diesel is going to affect them. They just look at the regular gasoline prices, you know, which of course we all know that that's high, you know, um, but they're not concerned about diesel because these people are very short-sighted. They don't have any type of foresight. They don't think critically, you know, but diesel is what pretty much, um, you know, uh, is it, it, is is critical. You know, for the um, for the economy, if you will. Uh, this is how all your goods are delivered. You know, by these particular eighteen wheelers and trains and you know uh, certain boats. You know, so without that diesel, man, shit, that's an attack on your supply. You know, and of course we we should know by now that this is uh that this is manufactured. You know, these particular shortages, you know, whether it may be food shortages or shortages of uh, commodities or whatnot, you know, the, the so-called powers that be, you know, Esau, Edom, they have uh, orchestrated this uh, pretty much in means to besiege their citizens, man, right, to ultimately make their citizens get on one knee and, um, and come crawling unto them under for a certain condition, and that's under the condition of you're going to have to get the MOTB, the Karagma. So, uh, you know, like the old saying in the world, there's many ways to skin a cat, you know? So there's a lot of angles and ways that Esau, you know, has, has in place, so like he has in place, you know, in order to put the, uh, put the squeeze upon people. And this is also going to contribute to the food uh, shortage as well. All right. So it says diesel, is in short supply as demand rebounds following the, the, the pandemic. While supply remains tight, prices have surged to record levels, adding to inflationary concerns across the economy. It says the problem is especially acute on the East Coast where prices have become unhinged. And um, let's see, skip down here, it says, Diesel prices are surging, contributing to inflationary headwinds due to the fuel's vital role in the American and global economy. So this is going to put the whole world on a crunch, man. And as we've been saying, you know, they're they're blaming all this on 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 the uh, the attack that Russia commenced upon Ukraine, right? But it's much bigger than that. And you know, we <laughs> I know. That man ain't no shortage on this diesel supply. It's just a shortage on, it's just an restriction on how much they want it to, on how much they want it to go out. You know, it says tankers, trains, trucks all run on diesel. The fuel is used across industries, including farming, manufacturing, metals, and mining. And this is this has everything to do with your everyday life. Farming, well, your uh, your eggs, your bread, whatever. You know, your food, manufacturing, right? These particular companies that make these particular goods, you know, whether it may be TVs or, you know, whatever it may be, cars, right? Metals, yeah, they your cars. <sighs> so yeah, mining, you know, coal, things of that nature. And these are these are all things that are, you know, that involves diesel. So this diesel is the fuel that powers the economy, all right? And it says, said Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analyst at Gas Buddy, higher prices are certainly going to translate into more expensive goods. And that's putting the crunch on the average citizens, man. 
you know, uh, it's been a record number. I know it was like 4.4 million people left their jobs last August. Another 4.4 million people uh, uh, quit their jobs uh, earlier this year, and they're steady quitting. So, hell, you got, what, 8.8 uh, .8 million people, you know, that's just on record, you know, leaving their jobs, not including the people that's, you know, that's still working and they're already um, feeling the crunch, you know, with inflation going up but yet their pay is remaining the same, right? So these expensive goods, hey, pretty much, you know, it's going to get to a point to where people are just going to get entirely fed up and they're just going to start rioting everywhere, man. And this is what they want. They want that order uh, out of chaos. So let's get some scriptures. Second Edges 6 and 22, it says, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And these particular storehouses, they're stored up by those 18 wheelers. You know, they 18 wheelers backing up to the docks, right? Uh, filling up the storehouses, right? But that's they're about to be found empty. Why? Because fuel, you know, this fuel uh, crisis, if you will, is going to inhibit, you know, those 18 wheelers, you know, to go to these uh, storehouses and fill up. All right, so these uh, so pretty much storehouse, they're about to be drained, whatever's left in them, you know. And, you know, on top of, you know, food, food prices rising. Now, I want to get this other article here. It's off of um, endtimeheadlines.org. And it says, many of the greatest lakes and the world are drying up, raising concerns. Yeah. So part of your uh, food shortages, you got what? People about to be thirsty as shit, you know? And then with these particular lakes and reservoirs drying up, that's going to also contribute to the food shortage because you got to water the crops, right? So... Let's read. It says uh, something worrying is going on with the world's greatest lakes. Slowly but surely, some of them rapidly vanish or have already almost completely disappeared. Today, water around the globe is disappearing faster than ever. Blue gold, which is what they call it now, blue gold, because it's, it's precious. Water is rare. It's precious being, you know, <laughs> rare now because it's drying up and as we speak out there in california they're in the crisis you know i believe it was lake powell and lake powell um generates electricity to, to hundreds of thousands if not millions of people and now they're now they're being um warned that um that severe water restriction is going to be applied unto them and also possibly uh power outages because you know lake power you know uh has hydro it generates hydroelectricity you know and it's not just lake powers um there's a couple other spots i know there's a spot out there now was in new mexico right they got a large wildfire you know the lord's, the lord's heating things up man as apostle tahar coined this year the year of your how about your mouth shop turning up so it says blue gold is privatized so and bought by a huge corporation. Yeah, who you think does that? Esau Edom. As the scripture says in Job 9 and 24, all right? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. All right, so let me finish it out. He covered the face of the judges thereof, if not where, and who is he? So the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. So with the world being in the hand of the wicked, which is Esau Edom, what do you think he's going to do? with the resources uh in in it right he's going to he's going to uh use it for his game use it for his purposes which when you consider you know how the how the land looked you know particularly america when uh when gad and reuben which is uh you know the um seminole indians you know we're, we're living here man it was beautiful you know the waters were clear Plenty of water, you know, plenty of food, you know, grass was green, right? But but when 
Esau came over here, started slaying, you know, uh, Native Americans and the Seminole Indians. Man, that was just like that was the beginning, you know, of 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 uh, of, of, of these particular lakes and shit just being poisoned, and the lakes became murky, you know. Everything is just um, uh, um, in a in a sorrowful estate. Let me get this real quick. When the wicked bear ruin. This is Psalms. It's like it. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Yeah, people are mourning now, man. See? Because this, this is further proof that the wicked is in power. Right? How, how can you explain, right, lakes, you know, the, the, the world's greatest lakes drying up, man? You know, it's because this man sucks the life out of everything. He fracks everywhere, uh, constantly drilling holes in the earth just to get some oil. When there's plenty of ways, man, you can, you can, um, you know, um, energize or fuel these particular uh, vehicles, you know. You know, hydro cars, hydro planes, whatever. And they've already been invented, but they killed the ones who, who came up with the inventions. Because why? It all centers around money. See, right, the 10th chapter says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So this is why the Lord's about to pluck this man off of the throne, because he's clearly unfit for rulership. And he destroys the earth, as is written in Revelation 11 chapter. So it says, blue gold is privatized, sold, and bought by huge corporations. Yeah, you have to buy water. That proves that you're, you're a slave, man. You have to buy water. And water was freely, you know, freely given unto us. And what do you, how would I say in, in, in Matthew, the 10th chapter, although he was speaking that concerning the, 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 uh, the word, the ministry, he says, freely you have uh, received, freely given, freely give. You know, uh, but hell, that could be applied to this water, the air. They sell air. You try to go put some air in your tires. You got to buy that. But it says blue gold is privatized, sold, and bought by huge corporations that only think about making always more money. Meanwhile, the large reservoirs, such as huge lakes, are going extinct. Here we present 10 very large bodies that have already dried up or are rapidly disappearing around the world. Yeah, you can read the rest, you know for yourself but um this is jeremiah chapter 50 and 38 it says a drought is upon her waters and they shall be dried up for it is the land of graven images and they are mad upon their idols yet is right and it all stems around because america is uh is a seat of idolatry man you know and the lord the lord detests and he hates idolatry you know so this is where all these evils are coming up on this world as it's written in the wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter. You know, that pretty much let me grab that real quick. The drought is upon these physical waters and these spiritual waters, if you will. You know, and people are known as waters. It's about to be a drought upon these people. The Lord's about to make a sore slaughter upon this place, man. This is uh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. And uh, 27, for the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. See, in America promotes, you know, uh, that you can worship whatever or whoever you want to here, man. See, so clearly the Lord has a hit out for this place, man. <laughs> And he's making it be made known. And when you consider um, how um, how ancient Babylon or the Neo-Babylonian Empire, you know, fell. I believe it was King Cyrus. He uh, he dried up the waters around, you know, uh, Babylon and, and pretty much, you know, um, besieged it and attacked Babylon like that. Because Babylon was surrounded by waters. And, you know, with this being Babylon the Great, and the Lord is, is attacking all the water supply here, man. He's even about to uh, hide away this water of the word. 
you know, if you will, in Amos, the eighth chapter. All right, it says, a drought is upon her waters and they shall be dried up for it is the land of graven images and they are mad upon their idols. So, you know, I just wanted to bring those, those two articles out, you know, Lord willing, you know, you, you brothers and sisters were edified. Till next time, DTA Bible Ball, Kwame Shirala, Shalom.